Hello! Welcome back to another video with your girl Q. How are my cutie Q's doing today? Mm -hmm. So you guys have been asking me to show you how I do my seafood boils. I'm going to show you a quick, a easy way to do a seafood boil. Now I also just want to say really quick, I am not a chef. If you're a chef, congratulations. I'm so glad you know how to cook professionally. Um, but I am not. I was asked if I could show how I do it. And um, there are some ingredients that I left out because this is just my personal taste. If you like other seasonings, use it. You know, put your favorite seasonings in it. I'm not saying this is how you have to do it. You can do it the way you want to do it. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Here are our king crabs. I get all my seafood from Costco. Make sure you're washing it thoroughly before you add it into your food because I don't know what that is. Something, I don't know if it's from the ocean. If you look in here, it's just a lot of different things in it and you don't want that to be in your food. The claws, like in the inside, all of that is cleaned out. There's also like little hairs here. So you wanna just make sure that you just are cleaning all of that out. I have a pot in my sink. This pot has salt water in it and I am just going to soak those in there. Now, my bigger pot is being used right now, so this is what I'm using. And I'm just gonna let this soak for a few minutes and then I'm gonna turn it around and soak it on the other side. And I'm just gonna let that sit in there and soak and I'm just gonna like keep turning it around every, every few minutes. This shrimp is frozen, but I did wash it off. If, it, um, if it's thawed out, that's perfectly fine. Now, mussels do not take long to cook at all. So I'm gonna add the mussels seven to 10 minutes before our seafood boil is completely done and ready to eat. These are the little tiny potatoes I get from Costco. It's this brand here from Costco. Um, the Little Potato Company Dynamic Duo. Some frozen corn. Frozen corn that I did wash off, so it's probably like falling out by now. Three fresh lemons. We have our butter here. We're gonna use two sticks of butter. Ginger, if you don't like ginger, you don't have to use ginger. You can use fresh ginger if you want, it's up to you. We have garlic, for our dry ingredients, we have garlic powder. We have parsley. I am also gonna be using, this is like my favorite, I love this, it is the Montreal steak seasoning. It is like, I just love the way this tastes and I put it pretty much on almost everything. We're gonna need chili powder. We're going to need paprika. We need lemon pepper, cayenne pepper, ground onion powder, hot sauce. I prefer, I love crystal hot sauce, it's my favorite. I like the way this tastes. This is red pepper powder. I got this from my Asian restaurant. You can basically make your food spicy with this. So if you want to use red chili peppers, you can. You can use this if you want to. I like the way that tastes. Minced garlic. You can use fresh garlic if you want to. It's totally up to you. We need some Worcestershire sauce. Sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. And that is everything that we are going to need. Now I'm going to show you how to place everything in here. I am using the Reynolds kitchen oven bags. This is the large size. And um, people put turkeys in here, um, uh, hams in here. And today we're gonna put our seafood in here. You can use a big bowl if you want. You can use a pot if you want. It's up to you on what you want to use. Now that our king crabs have been soaking, took some warm water, ran the warm water in the cracks and in the crevices. And uh, look how big that is, you guys. Look at that. That thing is long. So I just took the water, let the water run all through it, took my fingers, massaged it out because sometimes it has nastiness, like dirt stuck on the shell. And so it's nice and smooth. Everything has been wiped off on both, both of them. So now we're just going to go ahead and place it in the bag. Now it's a little bit easier to do this with like snow crabs or something that's a little bit smaller, but because the legs are so sharp. What I'm gonna do, I'm just going to break the end and just put that in there. I don't want it to stab the bag, so I'm just gonna break this piece off here and put that in there. And we're gonna put that in there face down. 
I'm going to go ahead and take the corn and I'm gonna start placing the corn in the bag now because we're just gonna place all the food inside here first. Then we're going to dry ingredients next. So we got our corn in here. Now we are going to take our potatoes. Here's our potatoes. They've already been washed off. So we're gonna go ahead and place those in here as well. And I wanna make this video very detailed. I wanna make sure that I answer everything in the video the first time. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our shrimp. Our shrimp has already been de-veined, cleaned, and everything. Look how big these shrimp are. These shrimp are so big. Now we are gonna go ahead and start on our dry ingredients. Now, you guys, I do not measure anything. I just pretty much stop when I feel like it's, it's okay to stop. I will try my best to explain it and show you guys the best way that I can. So the first thing I'm gonna take is some garlic. Now, I love garlic. Now here's the thing with seasoning. Anything that says like powder on it, garlic powder, onion powder, you can use as much as that as you want because it doesn't. it's a powder, it doesn't have any salt in it. Now if it says garlic salt, now that's when you wanna calm down. But if it's, as long as it has powder on it, you can never really go wrong, especially if you love garlic. So I'm just gonna go ahead and season it. Um, and just, I'll probably just try to tell you how much I'm putting in here. Like I said, I love garlic and it looks like I'm doing a lot, but it's really not that much because we have a lot of food that we're going to put in here. Next, I'm going to take the paprika. Now, I like a lot of paprika in mine, so I'm going to probably do two tablespoons. It smells so good good so that was probably like a tablespoon probably a tablespoon like I said you guys I'm eyeballing it I'm so sorry I'm also gonna take some chili powder I'm using about the same amount of all of that now lemon pepper, I'm gonna take about, probably like a tablespoon of lemon pepper as well. I'm gonna go in with a cayenne pepper, probably another tablespoon. Now this boil is gonna be a little bit spicy. You know, you have to measure your own spice level. The more cayenne pepper and more chili pepper, the spicier it gets. I want mine to be a little bit spicy, so I'm adding a little bit more. Next, we need onion powder. About the same amount for everything else. You can add Obey if you want to it. I don't do, oh, I don't really like a lot. I mean, I like Obey, but I can do without it. It doesn't really matter to me. But, you know, if you love Obey, put Obey in it. Now I'm gonna go in with the Montreal steak seasoning. <coughs> Excuse me. The Montreal steak seasoning. Now this has salt in it. That's about two tablespoons of the Montreal seasoning. Now I'm gonna go in with the parsley. Now you can use fresh parsley if you want to. It's totally up to you. I like a lot of parsley, so I'm gonna put about, I'm gonna put about three tablespoons of parsley in there. Now I'm gonna go in with the red pepper powder. Like I said, I want this to be a little bit spicier, so I'm gonna add a little bit more of this stuff, but you just have to measure your own spice level. So I'm gonna put about three tablespoons. About three tablespoons of that. Now we are gonna go in with our wet ingredients. I'm gonna go ahead and add two sticks of butter to this. This butter here, um, you can melt it if you want to, it's up to you. You can leave it like that, it's totally up to you. So we got two sticks of butter in here. I'm gonna add about five, I'm gonna add a lot of the Worcestershire sauce. So I'm gonna try to go ahead and measure that. So I added about 
about five tablespoons of the Worcestershire sauce. Now, you guys, I love garlic. So I'm going to go in on this garlic, okay? So I'm going to add... I'm going to add a lot of garlic because I love garlic. So I just added like four tablespoons of garlic in there. Now I'm going to go in with the crystal with the crystal hot sauce. I'm just going to stop when I feel like I don't want to I don't want any more. And you can use any hot sauce that you want. If you like Tabasco, it's up to you. And I don't like a lot of ginger, but I am going to add a little bit of ginger. If you love ginger, add a lot. If you like a little bit, add a little bit. So I'm going to add about that much ginger to it because I don't really do a lot of ginger. I don't really do ginger like that. But it is good in some stuff. Some lemons here, they have already been cleaned off. I'm going to take the juice of three lemons. Now, if you love your food, lemony. If you love your food lemony, go ahead and add, you know, more as much lemon as you like. I'm going to squeeze the juice. Squeeze the juice of two lemons. I'm going to turn my oven on. I probably should have had it on already. And we're going to put that on 350. We're gonna put it in the oven for 30 to 40 minutes, but we're gonna check it at 30 minutes to check to see how everything is looking and making sure that our potatoes are cooking. Now, being as though the potatoes are tiny, they shouldn't take that long to cook um, because they're small, but we're gonna check back in 30 minutes. So I'm going to take this off. And this is how it looks. So I'm going to get the air out of it. I'm going to spin it around and I'm going to put it in a knot. You will never have to open this bag up again until it's time to eat if you put everything in that you want to put in the bag. So this is it and everything is in there. I'm just going to mix it around a little bit. Now this is a heavy duty bag, you guys. They put, turkeys are be, are put in here, hams are put in here, so um, you don't have to, I mean, you can be careful, but this is a pretty heavy duty bag. I found some twisty ties, so instead of tying it in a knot, this is like way easier. I took two twisty ties and I am going to tie that together. And now we have it. Our seafood boil is on a cookie sheet. It's gonna go into the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes. I'm gonna keep checking it probably about every 15 minutes. I'm gonna check it 15 minutes after it's been in the oven. Just keep checking on it, you know, making sure that everything is cooking properly. Seven to 10 minutes before the boil is done, I am going to put the mussels in because mussels don't take long to cook. So this is gonna go in the oven. I just took it out of the oven. Look how good it looks in there. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. It looks so good in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put our mussels in. They've been washed off. And I'm gonna close this up and they're gonna go back in the oven for about seven, seven minutes. And there you have it, a seafood boil in a bag. This is how everything came out. Looks really, really good. But I would recommend to boil your potatoes um, until they're halfway done and then put them in the bag because some of them can still be hard. So just to be sure, just boil them first. But that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you comment, 
like and subscribe if you want to and i'll see you guys in the next video bye